But you had called, I believe, for three months of assistance to small businesses replacing 80 percent of revenue. Looks like we're getting maybe two months at 100 percent. What do you think? I think that's a, I think that's right, and I think that's the right place to be. I mean, 100 percent is actually the best number for small and mid-sized businesses, most of whose revenue goes to payroll anyway. These loans, of course, would be forgiven if people keep their workers uh, on payroll. And it really is an important backstop for a critical sector of the economy. So kudos to Senator McConnell and the bill. One thing that I'm already hearing from folks uh, across the country is concern about whether small businesses will trust uh, this deal, so to speak, which I find interesting. I'm not sure if it's because we just don't have the text yet, and once we do, there will be a, a more of a level of trust, or if because the strings attached, uh, they're worried it, over time it might turn out that there were more provisions than just uh, retaining or rehiring workers. How and why should businesses out there believe that they are indeed going to be able to access this eight weeks of pay, um, you know, and, if, and not have to pay it back if they if they follow those measures? Uh, it is critical, and I, I think that the uh, government will have to make sure that it publicizes this because it is absolutely just the keeping workers on payrolls, my understanding from the bill. And if uh, small businesses don't take advantage of this, many would have to lay off those workers or close. So I, I hope the communication will be quick and that banks can also help uh, in that communication. It will be very important for the government not to retrade anyone. This is not a situation caused by uh, any business. It's a pandemic. Glenn, uh, what is the cost of this going to be longer term, you think? I mean, we were, as a country, running at deficits during an economic boom, and, and now we're, we're certainly going deeper for an understandable reason. But when people talk about the, the impact of this and getting back to normal, does that mean you expect that taxes stay at the same uh, level and the government can continue to operate at the same level of revenue, or is more revenue going to have to be raised? Well, you ask a great question. I would think about it in two parts. First is, right now, we have to get the economy back on track, because the question is, what's your counterfactual? If we don't do something like this, the economic cost of mass unemployment and a lot of shuttered businesses is even worse. Second, yes, this will accumulate a lot of debt. I think it costs more than the Congress thinks it's going to cost, but kudos to them for doing it, uh, for doing it anyway. And at some point, yes, we will have to either raise taxes and or uh, cut public spending. There is no free lunch. Glenn, when you look at this bill that's making its way through Congress today, I mean, it's the largest fiscal stimulus package in modern U.S. history. It's the third package we've had in the last couple of weeks. You couple that with what have been unprecedented and massive moves by the Federal Reserve as well. And then, of course, the fact that we've seen some pretty intense um, lockdown, shelter-in-place uh, orders, et cetera, enacted in, in recent days and recent weeks to try and bring that infection curve down, is a recession a foregone conclusion? Well, a recession, I think, is a foregone conclusion. The question is, what does it look like? It should be relatively short and sharp uh, until businesses can restart. The pandemic is more like a natural disaster than it is uh, something like a typical recession or depression. In some sense, 08 is not a great guide here. There was a lot of behavioral issues that got us in trouble in 08. This one just came out of left field. So I, I think we have to be careful. I'm curious about the exit strategy here, uh, both for the federal government, because we could be running a 15 to 20 percent deficit now, uh, and for the Federal Reserve, which has expanded uh, enormously into different kinds of asset buying programs. The liquidity facilities, I guess, are pretty easy to unwind. Um, but what about the rest of it, Glenn? And, and should people be more concerned about what happens with Treasury yields from here? Well, I think that in, in terms of the Treasury and the Fed, the quicker the Treasury can get at this problem, particularly the shutdown problem for small and mid-sized businesses, the better. And this will unwind itself over time. That still leaves the debt to be serviced, but I'm, I'm not worried about an ongoing spending boom. For the Fed, yes, it can unwind facilities. But the Fed, frankly, should always be poised to be a lender of last resort. Congress had clipped the Fed's wings uh, in Dodd-Frank with so-called Section 13.3 of the Federal Reserve Act. I think it's wise to have the Federal Reserve have broad lending power because when a crisis happens, it has to move quickly. Just to dig into that a little bit more, Glenn, I mean, when we're talking about what could amount to a $6 trillion 
stimulus here. That's according to White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow. Um, at some point, this pandemic is going to pass. The worst of it's going to be over. We're going to emerge from a recession. Um, what is that going to look like in terms of refilling that budget hole? Well, again, that's you know largely a political question. The U.S. can withstand moderately higher debt levels, but that would be a very big increase in debt, especially since we have a big problem with entitlement programs that aren't even in the publicly registered debt. So at some point on a, quote, clear day, we will have to look at both revenue and spending in the federal government. But in a crisis, the point is to right the ship. And I think that's what the administration and Congress are working on.